Today's tutorial will show you how to send out ASCII commands from our HMI to a universal ASCII slave. Select File, New. We will call this project ASCII Send. Click OK. I have previously created this project, so I will click Yes to replace it. First, we must select the HMI we will be using. Today, we will be using the MT4300T. Click and drag onto the screen, select OK. Next, we must select the PLC that we will be using. You will not find the PCL601, which is the controller we are currently using, on this list. Therefore, we must resort to the universal ASCII slave that Kinko has provided us with. Next, we must select the connector RS232 cable connected to COM0 of the HMI and COM0 of the ASCII slave. Verify they are both connected. We also have to verify that both the HMI and the PCL601 are in, baud rates are in sync. The PCL601 only accepts a baud rate of 38,400. So we must verify that the HMI's COM port 0 settings are both an RS232 cable and our end is set to 38,400. Once we have done that, select OK. Next, we go to the startup screen. Not all universal ASCII slaves are created equal, meaning that not all universal ASCII slaves take the same commands. For today's example, we will be using the command at zero dollar sign, which will be sent to the controller and then the controller will send us back the software version it is currently using. In order to do this, we must create a new macro. Let's call this send for simplicity. We have to check both the user manual of the PCL601 to get our ASCII commands that we want to utilize, and we have to also check the protocol of the universal ASCII slave that Kinko has provided us with. That protocol states that all text to be sent will be stored in register LW0 and will be sent by local bit register LB0. And in order to receive data back, we must instantiate local bit 1 LB1 to B1. To do this, we have to add our variables at the bottom. We'll start with LB0. Verify that it is a bit state setting and it is address 0. Next, we can add LB1. We must verify that the address is both 1 and it is bit state setting as well. Select OK. Next, we have our buffer that holds our text. We will call this LW. Make sure the address is 0. We want this type to be of unsigned int and an array of size 7. You can choose this array size to whatever you like, but for today's example, I am using 7. I will comment the ASCII command that I want to send at $0 sign, and we will begin filling our buffer LW0. We begin with LW array position 0. Because it is an unsigned short, we can only fit two characters into this array position. So we will begin with zero at. Because the orientation of this text is switched when being sent out. So we must switch it now for it to send correctly. Next, we will add the dollar sign in LW array position one, which is the final text value that we want to send. We also have to instantiate LB1, like I said earlier, to be a 1 so that we can receive the data that PCL601 is trying to send back to us. We must do the same with LB0. That way, all the text in LW0 can be sent to our controller. Once we have done this, we can save and go to Tools, Compile, verify we have no errors, which we don't. Go back to our startup screen. And we have to select a function part called function key. That way, every time this button is pressed, it will execute our macro. So select execute macro. We only have one macro to select from. Next, we will label this send.
and verify again that we have a macro selected. Click OK. We then must select a notebook part to display which text we are sending and which and what we are going to receive back. So we are sending LW0, so we have to verify that our notebook register is set to LW0, which it is. Make sure that it is long enough. We have four words that will allow us to display, which is more than enough. Minimize this. Next is the receive notebook, which we have to set to LW100. Verify that we have enough room. Four words is not enough, so let's change this to eight. Select OK. Shrink, and we'll move over. And there you have it. You just got to save our project and tools compile. Verify we have no errors. We have none. Now we can download to our HMI. Select download. And we will see this on our HMI and see the text that we received back.